that you've wrestled before make it onto WWE TV, what does that do for you? Or, or I mean, does it give you hope? It's does like it a hug you? from grandma, man. Yeah. It's, like, <laughs> it's like head to toe warm and tingly. Uh, you're like, ah, come on. And especially people like, like Brody or Luke and Colin, especially, we can all attribute that Colin is easily one of the greatest human beings to ever walk this earth yeah. like as yeah. fuck wrestling all aside mm-hmm. Colin Delaney is easily one of the the nicest most genuine good hearted dudes any of us have ever met in our lives so awesome. to know that you know how long after his last WWE run like 10 12 2008, 13 years, 2009, right? 2007 2007 eight. okay so <laughs> 10 years after his first run and he still has the same passion goes back there and still has the same heart for it with no ill feelings whatsoever because he goes back there and does the same shit he was doing after he was released yeah. to come out of it all with a smile come on it was, oh, great. It was great for that because it was kept, kept such a, t- a secret like he can't go around like, no, yeah. around like oh I'm going to be on TV this week no you flip through the channel and say oh fuck Collins on TV yeah. let me watch this <laughs> yeah. but uh, yeah well you know what I mean uh, because, uh, because uh, other wrestlers that I've talked to in the area are like hope you know, it, it gives you hope. Yeah. You know that. Mm-hmm. You know if you stay, if you if you stay with it, you work hard, you're in the gym, you do all the right things. There's, if he could, if he got there, it it can happen to me, kind of. Kind For of. me, it's been someone like Ty Dillinger who had a, a hand in training me. It's like to see the, the the success he's had since he's been there. Like, it's great. He had that run before as Gavin Spears, or whatever. That just didn't work out. But since he's been back there, did the perfect ten thing and it's fucking mm-hmm. taken off. You know, Braxton Sutter is obviously well known. He wrestles in mm-hmm. in in, uh, in Empire State. Um, now you have your veterans, your you know your your independent uh, talents, mm-hmm. uh, veteran guys. Having a guy like Braxton who's been, you know, who's on TV with um, TNA, hopefully they, they might still be in business. We're not sure yet. Um, but, you know, having a guy like that who's been uh, on, t- who's, who's on TV constantly, how much of a resource is that? So the, the greatest thing that has probably happened in 2017 is um, Braxton definitely took a stronghold on the area and I, stronghold in the best term. Like he got, he started taking over Wednesdays at Grapplers Anonymous for advanced training courses. So like anybody that's looking to get, become a better wrestler, work a TV style, or just, you know, before he was on TV, he was working, you know, good indie matches for the past seven, eight years. Yeah. Um, he's now taking guys to the gym because he's obviously in phenomenal shape showing us what to do for us that don't know what the fuck we're doing in there, showing us how to do it, do it well, wrestle well, uh, stay a good dude. And as far as uh, it, uh, Empire State Wrestling is concerned, he's definitely taken a step up to, and uh, he's aging matches now, and he's making sure like everything flows well, everything's structured well, there's nothing repetitive. We go out there, we tell a good story, we keep him happy. All that good stuff. He's one of those guys that's directly responsible for this Empire State and this area becoming better. Holy yeah. shit, yeah. Was uh, was anybody at the November ESW show here? You were. That was. Okay, so. Um, I actually said hi to you, and you just gave me the look and just walked away. Wow. I, <laughs> I was in character. <laughs> but um, speaking of that, like like he said, nah, dude, like from, from October to November, he goes, you're just going to fucking change. He's like, I'm put on these fucking jean shorts and find a band shirt. I'm like. Are you out of your fucking mind? I'm like, I dropped $375 on wrestling gear, and you're telling me to put on my shorts from two years ago and a band shirt? He's like, trust me. And not everybody got it, but people, he goes, dude, I've had people come up to me like, I used to watch Raven. That guy's just fucking like Raven. He goes, he's fucking cooler. Dye your, <laughs> your hair. Don't spike it. He's like, we're going to revamp everything. And, I, and of course, like, insecurity is a real thing. I'm like, I don't know if this is going to work. And it worked. Yeah. And it's still working. And I, I, I can't wait. And I owe him everything. I literally owe him everything. And it's, and it's something that started with, with just uh, any other seminar, Grapplers Anonymous. Like, you go to these other seminars, uh, Sammy Callahan, whoever else. Uh, Chris Hero, Michael Elgin, whatever the case. Like these are guys that you're gonna see at a seminar, see at a show, and you're never probably never see again. So they're not gonna take that type of special interest in you the way Braxton has with us. It started with the seminar, seminar Grapples and since then he's been there every Wednesday, helping guys out. Like it, it, 
like I said, he's the one directly responsible for all these changes, uh, everything good that's been happening in this area. It, it all goes back to him. Cool. Yeah, for sure. Very cool. He's someone who's achieved success in this business and hasn't hasn't gotten an ego over it. If anything, he's more helpful than ever. Yeah, I mean, I've seen I've, I've, I've seen some of the cuts on the on the Facebook page or whatever like that. He just seems like a guy that um, he's going to tell you what he thinks. Yeah. And but he's going to do it in a in such a way that it's more constructive, not destructive. Mm -hmm. He's not one of those guys that's like, oh, I've been on TV, fuck you, this is what you're doing wrong. No, he's there to help you. Right. And, and the, the, the criticism he's giving is in a positive way. He's, he's helped guys in so, in so many ways. Oh, yeah. I'm going to keep this uh, pretty, like, pretty vague. You guys can ad lib to whatever you want. But we had somebody in the area that had a, uh, an extra spot in WWE. I mean, I know there's only a handful of those, so just use your imagination. And uh, during the back, he's seen somebody that he worked with a promotion with. He's like, oh, so what are you doing now? He's like, oh, well, I'm, I'm training with Braxton or Pepper Parks. He's like, does anybody else here know that? Because, like, Pepper, he's huge here. Like, people respect Pepper, and they respect anybody that his name is on. Yeah. And he that gives a stamp of approval. Like, if you don't tell people that, like, you have to. Like, he's very well respected wow. so like and it, we were all kind of blown away like wow this is just a guy that had like four or five WB tryouts and nothing kind of ever came of it he's like no 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 it, it, that wasn't the case I mean it was but people like he knows what he's doing he's in fucking good shape he's still on TV and people still know his name there mm -hmm. come on yeah um, okay Mr. Park Hi, how you doing? How you um, doing? <laughs> now, as a referee, um, you watch these guys. Uh, how 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 hard is it to kind of keep the matches um, in line when you're roughing? <laughs> it goes from wrestler to wrestler. Oh, um, I think it. Yeah, you know, everybody kind of sticks to what they're gonna do around here. Everybody kind of sticks to you know what they're what they want to do around here i don't really have too never really too many issues of you know getting out of hand or whatnot if we're looking at it from that point of perspective but um you know i, I my big thing about us is, is keeping everything on time for the shows and stuff yeah. and yeah. Uh, yeah. as a referee and i think most everybody kind of you know listens to you when you when you when i have to tell them something's going on do you guys listen to not really. And sometimes. <laughs> yeah. oh, specifically, like he was specifically requested not to ref any of my matches because I'm such a loose cannon. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on the referee. We like Jarka, but if, if it's a shithead referee out of there, we're going out there. We're gonna treat him just the same. Yeah. <laughs> so who is, uh, so who would you say is your wrestler of the year? I think this guy has done more individually to help his promotion than most other guys. I think AJ was a great pick, but I think Kenny Omega really. Huh? I think he really elevated yeah. New Japan and. <clears throat> more than any like any other person has like a promote a single promotion this year the guys in wwe you know that they're still helping the machine but him as a, one wrestler himself has done more for new japan i think than anybody other wrestler in any other promotion but i think he's been doing the good things for new japan for the past like ye like two or three years like this has been a constant kenny omega kind of put new japan on his back yeah. Like as far as one year is concerned, I don't think I'd pick Omega. I think like you can't deny him. I'll give you that. In but. terms of like he had the <laughs> supposed six star match this year. I mean, it, whatever people want to think about that, and then just the, the buzz that's generated between him and Jericho coming up for next year. It's it's definitely created a lot of buzz and attention for New Japan that they you know that they haven't had in years. Right. Yeah. yeah the, the buzz. I personally, and I I am so alone on this one. It's not even funny. Um, I am not looking forward to Kenny Omega versus Chris <laughs> Jericho at all. <laughs> really? Yeah. Um, who remembers the match between AJ Styles and Chris Jericho at WrestleMania? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I rest my case. Yeah. <sighs> Although, yeah, watching Chris Jericho throw an entire table was one of my favorite things. <laughs> I thought that match would have been great, though. Because a ref got hit with that table. But too. you know what, oh, though? This is not going to be a WWE match. Again, I hope to eat my words. I really, really do. So do I. I mean, I, 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 I see what you're saying, but it's like, you know, okay, now he doesn't have Vince standing there like, it's not holding no, his no, list. Yeah. no, 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 you know, I, it's, it's like, this is New Japan, let it rip, right? you know? Right. Um, but, uh, okay, okay, let's talk to the angry guy. At you the you end. don't think Vince has his finger in it at all? The Japan thing. Oh, it's his finger who? Oh, oh, he, he, oh, Vince has his finger. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I personally, but I'm just, I'm just saying because you know, 
there's a hit, there's, there's there's a history there. He's he's had ties with New Japan for a long time. I pers- you know. personally, I think this is a recruiting trip. Oh yeah. The, yeah. Well, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I really thought of that before. This is, he, this well, is go, go 25 years ago when he rec- when he got v- Vader to come to the WWE for a while. He was in New Japan. He I mean Vince has been friend had a lot of dealings with them. I, I was under the assumption anyway. Yeah. But I don't think I've ever thought of it like that. No. I was just under the presumption that like when Jericho started that cruise and he asked for the NXT guys to come on there and then Vince told him no. Yes. Supposedly. Well, yeah. Well, I think he went to more or less Triple H, and then Triple H was like, eh, no, we're not going to do that. But I think that could just be a story yeah. to get all of the Ring of Honor guys and maybe select independent guys to go on his cruise ship. Oh. Say, hey, get us Dalton. This is, oh, my God. Oh, Dalton, you know what? Dalton Castle. How about that? That's that's something. Um, what do you, uh, now you guys work with, any of you guys work with Dalton? Um, my Not in the ring, but we've done been on shows with him. Yep. Um, <laughs> my first uh, independent wrestling experience, like being in the back, I was actually doing uh, graphic video work. So like the entrance video work uh, for Empire State Wrestling with my cousin, like I would make the graphic and he'd put it together with moving clips. And um, we would go and give it to Brett and or the tech guy the day of shows on like a you know SD card or what have you. And um, I walked by and Dalton Castle was naked. <laughs> didn't, didn't, didn't think anything of it. I was wearing a Brody Lee shirt, too. Um, so we gave it to him, and he's like, okay, uh, Brett wants to talk to me. He wants to go pay me. Just stay here and chill. I'm like, okay. Stayed there and chilled, mind my own business, put my hands in my pocket. And I hear a voice far to the left of me. He said, hey, kid. So I look over. It's Brody Lee, big as fuck. He goes, I want to see if that's right. Just stay there. And I'm like, Okay, but I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. This Brody Lee shirt says Big Rig Brody Lee, and in the middle of it is a boot print. I didn't think anything of it. He comes beelining at me and boots me in the chest as hard as he can, but it was still light as fuck. I tumble over the table into a naked Dalton Castle's arms, and he's cradling me like a child. You okay, buddy? It throws me back on my feet. I'm like... I don't think I like wrestling anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! It was, uh, yeah. I was one of Dalton's boys once. Oh yeah, it was definitely oh, an experience. I have that picture somewhere. <laughs> I was gonna say, there's got to be a picture, or it didn't happen. There is. Uh, <laughs> oh my goodness! Continue oh. to tell the story. Well, yes. Uh, yeah, it was. It was at ESW. I was uh, done with my little uh, rendezvous, I guess. Uh, a couple of my friends and I, we got beat up by Sandman. Not my fondest, not my fondest moment. You um, guys probably deserved it. I, 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 some I, of the ones in there deserved I, it. I low-key kind of deserved it, but nevertheless. Um, so I'm in the back. See, Dalton comes up to me and a, another uh, smaller guy, my stature. Scala, come here. I got, I, I, I got a job for you guys. I'm like, all right. Thought nothing of it. We go walking into his... Uh, the locker room. He's like, all right, put these on and come do my entrance with me. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I have nothing else to do. Like, sure, right. why not? It's a little <laughs> greedy, but... I <laughs> 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 little beard. Uh, um, for, for me, Dalton... Dalton started training and he had his first match like after I started refing. So... Like I see him on Ring of Honor, and I see him all, you know, doing mm-hmm. so good, and it's it's kind of surreal. Yeah, yeah. just just it makes me feel kind of old too. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, you do have a couple of grays in your beard. Oh but, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jeez, Jarka, they told you to leave a touch of gray. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at you. 